Hey, how are you? I'm, I think I'm good. Okay. All right. Nice to meet you after following Very you nice online. To meet you too. Following you, not stalking you in a nice way. But. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to be sharing this interview with lots and lots of people. You can get lots and lots of, look, the eyes go wide. Like, <laughs> they start twitching. <laughs> okay, so um, you've been the social media director for the Times of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the newspaper is just over a year old, and you came on the scene. There was an older, established English paper, the Jerusalem Post, and basically in one year you, like, kicked its butt. You've got, like, 50,000 or so fans on Facebook, and they've got, like, what, three? Uh, you know, some ridiculous number. Um, how'd you do it? Well, um... We have, first of all, we have a great team. Uh, and I, I'm saying none of this to disparage the other newspapers uh, that are that were already in existence. They're, you know, they, they write what they write and, and they, they produce content and it's, sometimes it's great. But what we do that I think is really different is we have a really, really incredible platform. Uh, the blogger platform helped launch Times of Israel to... Um, Sort of to where it is. Um, you've got, you've got that. Where, you've got that uh, that theme, well, that amazing theme that lets you test and switch and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Well, I, I think first of all, David Horvitz assembled an incredible team of people, uh, and he hired a great development team to create the website and to create the platform. But we have the news, and we also have this. Um, a, a live blogger platform where people can set up a blog and start writing. And, uh, and you've got you know, lots of lots of good people there blogging for absolutely. you. Absolutely. And people don't blog to not be read. If you wanted to write a diary, you write a diary. But people who are blogging publicly want traction. And so we're all out there promoting our own articles. And actually, that's how I got started with Times of Israel. I started out as a blogger. And uh, um, one of my articles generated a little buzz, shall we say. And um, that was the one with the rabbi, the, the one with the rabbi. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So but um, the, the other people, we, we now have 800 bloggers uh, or 800 people are signed up and are able to blog with us. Uh, 200 or 300 are active. And so that has brought in um, incredible amounts of traffic. Also having the open Facebook comment platform uh, enabled on the site, which forces people who are commenting to be accountable for what they say. And so you don't get that kind of uh, the negative trash talk and commentary that you might see on other sites. You know um, what? That, I just realized that. I mean, you do have people with strong opinions, sure. but they aren't insulting someone. Right. And even when and those who are insulting someone are doing it in in an accountable way because there's their face, there's their, their name, their avatar, their publicly, for the most part, owning what they say. And so then um, it's done, even when the, uh, the comments are insulting, there is a, a higher level of respect there. And it allows for conversation between the author, um, whether it's the feature writer of the article or the news reporter or the blogger, then to engage with the people who are commenting and to create a dialogue and to create a larger sense of community. That's one of the things that drew me to the site and why I'm so happy to be part of it. Um, David's hired uh, amazing writers, Elhanan Miller, Mati Friedman, Mitch Ginsburg, Raphael Ahrens, Ellie Leshem. Uh, they're all, you know, among others, very terrific core team, Jessica Steinberg, um, writing things that are interesting, that are meaningful, that... Um, that are that go beyond basic reporting. That uh, really kind of delve into the um, the nuance of this country, and so that's terrific. Also, the uh, on the news side and on the feature side, the articles are very, very fair. They uh, we don't lean to the left, we don't lean to the right. We report the news as carefully as we can. The blogger platform is another story, and that's where all the the, um, the passion and the opinion comes out, uh, swinging from all different directions, left, right, up, down, um, 
articles that are also um, engaging in a very profound way with what it means to be Jewish, what it means to be connected to Israel or connected to Judaism. And it's uh, David's managed to create in a site that has this amazing, beautiful, exquisite balance. So Thank I think you. that's very much part of the success of the site. Now, you guys have done some unusual things with, for example, like live blogging the elections. Yeah, oh, that's fun. Okay. Or live blogging the um, the rocket attacks. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm assuming you, you would know that that gets lots of readership. Yes. Uh, and we've certainly seen traffic spikes during these times because people come together to, and they care about what's going on, and we become the the home base, so the hub for that information. You know what was really cool during the elections? Um, uh, Jake Post, Haaretz, and, Ta and uh, Times of Israel teamed up to create one hashtag together. Um, you know, uh, Israel votes, and um, that was really neat because instead of competing with each other, we decided that it would be better for all of us. To have one hashtag where we all, you know, when we push out articles, whether it's a live blog or an analysis, we use that hashtag together, and it allows for bigger cooperation. Um, that's something you just don't, so you just don't awesome. see. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, and that was, it was so much fun to be part of that. I was on the, um, you know, Facebook and Twitter end of that, promoting the articles with that hashtag and working with Allison Kaplan Sommer from Haaretz and. Um, you no, know, we weren't cross-posting, but we were not, there was no infighting at that point. We understood the elections was, a, it was a big deal. People cared and uh, harnessing the power of one hashtag was really useful. So Sarah, so, let me ask you, um, as social media director, how do you see the difference for Times of Israel between Twitter and Facebook? completely different audiences. Tell, tell me who those audiences are. Okay. So people on Twitter, from what I can tell, are um, a lot of people that are interested in the high-tech articles. Um, and people who are following other sites on Twitter tend to be more interested in, um, you know, in, in the... Um, in the news that's quick to share, um, or in articles that have uh, high-tech relevance uh, or entertainment relevance. And certainly that's not true for everyone, but that's what I'm seeing. Facebook, it becomes more of a, uh, a community center where people then are going back and forth with each other on the articles or uh, sharing from one wall to another. Um, and they require a different voice at times. Um, and it's, it's a tricky balance sometimes between getting a headline right on Twitter uh, with the hashtags or with the right twist to it that will make people excited about sharing. Say, say more about this. Nobody really talks about this. You're sitting there and you've got 128 characters plus, ha plus hashtags. How do you mm -hmm. go about getting someone's attention on, on Twitter? I take it you don't just do the first thing that comes out of your mouth. Well, sometimes I do and hope for the best, but uh, primarily we, we um, hold on, I hear that I'm getting, that's probably showing up on the, uh, sorry, the messages on Facebook, you know, articles. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Um, so with Twitter, um, I'm sorry, would you mind repeating the question? No, the, how you go about writing headlines from uh to Twitter to make sure that they're that you connect with your audience. Well, the, what I found to be effective is I find sites that are would be interested in the particular article, and I make sure I mention them. So if it's something about um, um, you know Israel advocacy, I'm going to mention Stand with Us. If it's um, an article that is high tech related, you know, you might want to mention someone like Jeff Pulver or Ben Lang in, in the tweet because then they see it and then hopefully they, they share it or they comment and then their followers see it. Um, stuff with anti-Semitism, mentioning anti-defamation league or Yad Vashem if it's Holocaust related. And so I found that that helps 
articles to push beyond the people who are just looking at our feed. Of course, hashtagging words like Israel or, um, or Gaza, Palestine, Hamas, Syria, that also helps push an article forward. And um, when, uh, when certain movements are taking place like Stop the Rockets or Israel Under Fire, following along with that hashtag, and using that as well, or as I said before, with the um, with the elections, election uh, Israel votes, or Knesset um, nineteen or um, election to twenty thirteen, that also helps an article uh, gain more traction because people are already looking for that hashtag, and so when they see the hashtag associated with the article, it makes it easier for them, and then they're more inclined to read it or to. Sure. Now, on the other side, there's also the Facebook personality. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not talking about the Sarah personality. I'm talking about the Times of Israel personality. Can you tell me a little bit about Times of Israel and Facebook? Sure. Um, we do our best to run articles out every hour and a half, every two hours. And um, we try to get a blend of hard news of interesting, compelling features, blogs, um, stuff for Startup Nation, um, stuff that's more lifestyle oriented. And um, the articles already have their header and they already have their paragraph description beneath it. So it's up to me to find another way of saying what's already been said or ask a question that will um, encourage engagement or, or at least some sort of reaction, whether, um, but not one that is, uh, but, but not yellow journalism. Um, Got to keep our opinions out of it. And sometimes that's tricky because I have strong opinions when it comes to Israeli politics or when it comes to... You know, I looked and you did not region. let your politics out of the bag during, ele <laughs> during election <laughs> so time. Even, even on your personal stuff, you didn't let it out. Mm -mm. And that was hard. It was very hard. But um, it would compromise the integrity of the site. So so even now, um, in private conversation, I might tell someone who I voted for, but keep it off the record. And uh, it's my job not to allow my own bias to come through when I promote articles. And wow, that was hard because I am a very opinionated person. But I, I find ways to... Um, to share what's important to me in a way that uh, won't hurt the site and will still be true to myself. And be authentic. So yep. um, let me ask you, you're watching the shares, the likes come in. Do you then go to the editorial board and say, hey, you might want to, you know, move this article up or down based on what's going in the reaction? Or are they tracking that? They're very, very, very good at tracking that. Um, but sometimes we'll see comments about something um, in the article that needs to be addressed. So I'll send it to someone on the news team, and then they'll take care of it. And we're a small enough team. We're actually a, a very cohesive core team so that there is a lot of immediate response and feedback on articles when, when there's an issue or when there's a question. Um, you mentioned recently, like your phone is like your secret weapon, you know, and you're like always there, always ready to go mm -hmm. on and 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 deal with with stuff. Um, Absolutely, yeah. So you basically run social media from if you're not in front of your computer, you're always on. Yeah, my office is right there in the palm of my hand, or charging in the electrical socket, and uh, it's. It's great. I take it very seriously. And um, Did you come under a, a personal attack during the last war? I mean, if you're out on Twitter, um, or was it just that did you get a lot of, um, did the Times of Israel come under attack, you know, um, that, from tweets and stuff like that? Tell. No, I mean, certainly there are people who are going to, pe people on either, on any extreme are going to find fault. It, it's funny, sometimes... Um, People on the far left say we're too far right, and people on the far right say we're way too far left. And so then we must be doing something right. Um, but no, we, we really weren't under attack. I think people really felt that our site 
was uh, reporting the news fairly and accurately and in real time. The live blog is a terrific tool, and um, it's great that David implements that and that the uh, that the staff is so dedicated that you're working around the clock during Operation Pillar of Defense. Nobody slept. I mean, we were the the uh, the live blog was constantly being tweeted. If I wasn't awake, someone else was awake to make sure that the latest headline was being pushed out. It was really, really dynamic. I, I had the sense that we were all in it together, that it didn't matter that we were all cracked out and exhausted and running on fumes and caffeine and adrenaline. We knew it was important. We knew that people cared and that, you know, there was no way of knowing if, if, um, if the prime minister was going to send our, um, our men and women into Gaza at any given moment, and people were paying attention to the site to find out the latest. And it was up to us to make sure that we were reporting as accurately and as efficiently as possible. And we we did that. And I think people, our, our readership recognized that, both on Twitter and on Facebook, and in the larger non-social media community as well. And so that felt good. Um, and then on my own personal account, um, no attacks. Uh, no one. I mean, people might jab me a little for one thing or another, but it usually has nothing to do with the Times of Israel. So okay, it's just being said. And that's fair enough. Yeah, you know, like because um, I, I, I'm still me, and I'm still authentic to who I am. And so, sure, I'm going to promote something from Jurodica or Jezebel or. Um, you know, I write openly for other sites, too. Right. That I wanted to, and actually, you went into that, and that's exactly where I wanted to go. Um, if you Google your name, you <laughs> are, you write extensively, you know, um, let's say Kveller, okay? Um, Huffington Post, Jezebel, uh, Juradica, um let, let, which one start? Which one was the first of those? Feller. Feller. Okay. Uh, we yeah. talked once on it. This is a site that's basically about Jewish family, what life, moms, and so forth. It has mm -hmm. a very extensive readership. Um, it's got lots and lots of traffic. How did that get started? Well. Feller launched, I believe, in September 2010. Whoa! Right, yeah. Th that's so th fairly new. Uh, whoa, that's not bad. So how yeah. does a site that launches in September 2010 go on to become a powerhouse so quickly? Well, Debbie Colbin, the editor at Feller, um, and the, uh, you know, Daniel Septimus from... Mm -hmm. My Jewish learning, and then the rest of the team have assembled a great core team of writers and contributing editors, all of whom write from different perspectives and are also perfectly willing and more than happy to push out their articles as well using Facebook and Twitter. So, so getting um, writers to push out mm -hmm. their articles is a common theme with um, uh, Times of Israel and Kveller so far. Sure. Well, I think a lot of uh, no one along the way has said to me in either site, hey, you need to promote yourself. But, you know, bloggers are a self-aggrandizing bunch. That's what we do. We we write to, okay, self-aggrandizing might be a bit strong. Um, we're writing publicly to create dialogue. And you can't have dialogue if you're writing your quiet little blog entry that might be beautiful and powerful and speak to a generation if you're not disseminating it through one or another social media channels. So, um, and luckily for Kveller and Times of Israel, the, the bloggers that are writing for both sites have come out in full force and done that. So Kveller also um, has uh, on on its writing team um, actress and um, activist and mother, Mayan Bialik, right. who is a terrific writer and writes about some, some tricky subjects as well. And my, so, my daughter was her babysitter when she visited. Really? Yeah, oh, Boca. Right. Wow. Yeah. So my, my, so my daughter, like she thinks, like she sees her on television, she goes, I babysat her children. That's, oh, that's nice. 
So um, she seems lovely. We in the email communications we've had, and she is a she really knows how to um, take these parenting topics that can be controversial and write about them in a very powerful, very holistic way that others can relate to, even if we make different parenting choices. So and didn't she? Her, and didn't she come out about her divorce on Feller too for yeah. the first time? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. She's brave. Yeah. So she's all out there. How big of a factor is having someone as known as she is? Um, I think it's a pretty big factor. Um, I just wrote a piece for Feller about the lies we tell on Facebook, and she she shared it on Facebook, and the article went completely viral. And I attribute the success of that article to to her support of it on Facebook as well, because it allowed. The article to reach a much wider audience, and the article is up to something like ninety-two thousand likes. Holy <laughs> cow! Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, um, so what were the ingredients that went into that? In other words, when you're picking a title for an article, okay, you've got to have an idea. But part of it is that's a really kick-ass title. Lies we tell each other on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to tell you. I gotta tell you a secret. I am terrible at titles. I'm horrible at them. I don't, there are very few times when I have come up with my own title completely on my own without assistance. Eli Leshem from Times of Israel is a genius. He is an absolute genius when it comes to funny captions on photographs and titles. The man is very talented, and he's, uh, he's one of our editors. He used to be the Ops and Blogs editor, and now he's over on the news desk. Miriam Hirschlag, who is the new Ops and Blogs editor, also very strong with titles. Debbie Colbin from Feller, terrific. So I, um, I have a hard time with it. And so having people who have different strengths, who put their egos aside to help someone else to create something that's better than the sum of its parts, that's very critical to the success of any site. Working together, um, um, bringing your own strengths to the table and helping um, bolster someone else's strengths with your own, it creates something really good. And that's that's what David Horowitz has done with Times of Israel. That's what Debbie Colbin has done with Feller. Okay, let's go on to Sarah Tuttle Singer and the Huffington Post. Mm. Okay. Writing for the Huffington Post is like everyone's dream these days. Um, breaking in there is not easy. You know, someone from the blue writing into the Huffington Post, it's probably not going to get a lot of traction, no matter how brilliant it is. How is it that you're opening these doors? Um, again, I should go. I should start by saying, actually, I want to explain how I got started with Kfeller because okay. and because that all it's all tied in. So may I may I back up and explain? Absolutely. It? And that will okay. So when I was when I found myself, oops, accidentally pregnant with my second child, I had a choice. I could either sit down, have a nervous breakdown, and cry my eyes out, or I could try to find the humor in a situation of having seven and a half month old baby girl just learning how to crawl and suddenly being pregnant with a sibling. So I chose the latter and I started a blog, The Crazy Baby Mama. No longer exists. I took it down. But it was um, one of those uh, mommy blogs where I tried to find the humor in each parenting situation. When I started that, connected with a woman, Meredith Lewis. Meredith Lewis is the daughter of my mother's very close college friend. Meredith and I have never met in real life, but she was on Facebook. She was seeing that I was promoting my blog. She worked for my Jewish learning and she said to me, hey, we're about to launch a parenting site. Let me put you in touch with our editor and maybe you can get started there. And that's exactly what happened. And it just so happened also that my, um, my family decided to move to Israel. And so I had a a blog spin to pitch that, you know, this new immigrant mother from Los Angeles living on a kibbutz in her hooker boots, trying to figure out what the hell she's doing. So Kveller took that on, liked it, got connected with the community at Kveller, all people I'd never met in real life, 
One of them, Jordana Horn, used to work for David Horowitz when he was over at the Jerusalem Post. She said to me, hey, I read something you wrote on your personal blog about Israel. You should submit it to Times of Israel. It's a new site. So I did that. And that launched my blogging career there and now my actual social media career there. And the same thing is true for Huffington Post. The writers for Feller were already writing for Huffington Post, Carla Naumberg, Jordana Horn. And when I saw that they were promoting their articles through Huffington Post, I said, hey, can you hook me up? And so they were able to do that. They gave me the, um, you know, their, their editors email. I emailed him. I said, hi, I'm from Feller. He had heard of us already. And so that made it easy. So it's all of this was done with people who I consider very good friends now who I've never actually met in real life. There's a very, very slight chance I could walk past them on the street and we wouldn't recognize each other. We know each other by our avatars and we've had very profound conversations about parenting, about relationships, life. And yet all of this is done online, all through Facebook chat, all through Gmail chat, through Twitter conversations back and forth. So it's profound the effect that social media can have on, on one's own personal brand and career. And so I am so grateful to that as yeah. well. And to the memory of my mother for putting all of this into place too, with her friendship from her college days at university of Texas. So, so that's kind of, I think it's cool. So if you were going to, let's pick, well, there's this, maybe it's a little bit different, but you're connected peripherally to um, a site uh, with my friend, uh, David from Julicious. Um, mm -hmm. it's, oh. a, it's a fairly new site. D David and I are drinking buddies when I come to Israel. Really? Yeah, okay. we both like our, our okay. rock. Yeah. Me too. Oh, there me you too. go. Yeah. Um, when I come, he introduced me to really good restaurants and fish and chips in, um, um, in Machana Yehuda and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So he felt that there was need or one of the people who felt a need for a site. It's called Julicious. Fairly new site. Has not yet taken off. What are the ingredients for taking a site and making it take off in your in your opinion? That's such a good question. Um, terrific content, stellar content that takes risks. Um, a team of writers who are not afraid to take risks in their writing and also take risks in their promotion of their writing. Um, I think Facebook comments are crucial. Um, having social media icons in place that are easy and um, that allow the reader to then disseminate the content. Um, sometimes advertisement, you know, promoting your site on other sites is necessary. Um, a lot of hard work, a lot of, uh, lot of elbow grease, um, but certainly I think finding a unique voice that is different, but also authentic is, is a crucial part of that. And, um, you know, having a great team of writers and a great, uh, team of support behind, now, behind you. Now, Jurotica is a site that by its nature has interest and also people going like, oh no, like, you know, I can't. Look at that. It's more like this. I am right. going to look, but I'm going right. to pretend that's not. Um, do you think that the social sharing is going to go down because people don't want to be seen as sharing that? That's, that's a challenge with the site. And I was helping them a little bit with their social media in the beginning. And certainly, people are going to be less inclined to clicking like on various pieces. I was less inclined to clicking like on certain pieces, too. Um, so I, I understand that hesitancy. I'm, I'm all for you know sixteen or sixteen positions to listen to Megillah Esther in, or you know. Yeah, exactly right. But it's um, I think are still sharing article links amongst themselves. You know, you're on Facebook chat, you see an article, copy the link and send it to your friend. That was um, that happened quite a bit with the Rabbi and the Vibrator piece. Um, the it's one of the most read. Uh, blogs on Times of Israel, and yet the um, social sharing, the social media icon, it's all, you know, only has a thousand likes or something. When in fact, 
it was read so very widely. So you must know, what's the number of people who read it? Like, what does analytics say? I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say, but a lot. <laughs> Definitely a lot. I'm guessing over 100,000 uh, reads. I'm not sure what it is now, but it could be up to that by now, maybe. Um, but again, people are cautious about clicking like when they see the word vibrator in the title. Um, and so, but, but that, but part of the edginess is what got right, Times so of Israel its audience. People are still going to read it, Ex exactly, because there's people are still going to copy it and send it to people, and it's going to get um, you know the traction on um, Reddit or StumbleUpon or whatever on these other aggregating sites. But at the same time, um, you're not going to see it on your your sister in law's wall. <laughs> okay, uh, well, let me go. You might, but it depends on on the, the personality behind the person who's sharing it. How long would you give a site to grow, you know, doing everything right, how long would you give a site to grow before saying, um, you know what, this is going to continue to grow or it's time to pull the plug, it hasn't caught on? Oh, it depends. It really, really depends. Um, I don't know. I, I'm so... I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure I can say that because uh, each site that I've worked with have different um, different kinds of readers. But I, I think a year is certainly enough time to see if something's taking off. And if it's really bombing in a year, it's going to bomb in the next year. The first few months are a general indicator. There's a lot of press and excitement about something. Even if the attention peters off a little in the beginning, I think that it can certainly be renewed with the right articles. Okay. Um it's let's, a question. It's a great question. Let's pretend that I'm starting a blog about expats around the world. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we've got people living in France, we've got people living in Dubai, and so forth. And I hear about Sarah in Israel, the expat who's living in Israel, and I say, Sarah, would you contribute an article for my site? What would it take... I don't have that blog, by the way, but it, what would it take, what would you be looking for in a blog to say, yes, I would contribute, yes, I'll play, or no, I don't want to be associated? What, looking at the blog, what would you be looking for? That's a great question. Um, I would want to see, well, first of all, it would depend on who's asking. If it's someone I know personally, I'll do it period, the end, you know, no questions asked. If it's not someone I know personally, I want to see that the the site has a readership and one way to tell without asking for the analytics, because that sometimes is a very personal question, like asking to see someone's underwear or something, so people don't <laughs> like to reveal that, okay. um, is the traction that it's getting on social media. Does it have a nice presence on Facebook? Does it have a nice presence on Twitter? I'm from... Me personally, I'm less concerned with Twitter. I prefer Facebook. I'm more at home on Facebook because I feel like the connections I make on Facebook are more um, more meaningful. And so I, I like to see that an article that the other articles that will come before mine are um, you know, have a, a nice amount of, of traction um, through Facebook, or that the the site, the Facebook site associated with the blog has a nice following. Um, that said, if I, I, I'm really lucky. I've trusted my intuition thus far in life and I am, I'm still alive. <laughs> so I think, um, and sometimes I'll, I'll just go with my gut. And if I think it's going to be a, a big site, um, I'll do it or I'll, I'll share something. Um, Times of Israel, when I started blogging for them in May 2012, they were growing, but it wasn't, it was nowhere near where it is today, uh, you know, just a few months later. So, but I liked the people I knew who were associated with it, and I liked what I was hearing about it. And so that was something that compelled me to take, um, to take a chance with it, to try something new. So, uh, so how, much of, how much of their traffic today, this is a big thing, you may know the numbers, you may not, I'm not asking for like competitive spying stuff, but um, 
how much of the traffic is coming from people going to their um, title bar and typing in Times of Israel versus people coming from Twitter or from Facebook or somewhere else in social media mm -hmm. land? Um, direct links from Google to the homepage are strong. Uh, direct uh, traffic from Facebook to the homepage is strong as well. So, uh, and also uh, traffic from the newsletter um, is nice as well. And uh, I think having a newsletter associated with the site, with any site, is actually a good way to increase traffic as okay. well. Okay. So, um, so you definitely. And, and the people upstairs are definitely seeing, like, Sarah is getting us traffic. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, y your personality, there's Sarah Times of Israel and Sarah Sarah, and they intertwine mm -hmm. on Facebook. Um, how do you, do you talk before about, you know, making sure that even though you're being Sarah, you're still being within the Times of Israel, like you don't want to be called in and go... Uh, Sarah, what are you doing on? <laughs> and it's happened a few times, but uh, it's. I work with great people. I'm really, really lucky that when David hired me, he he knew who he was hiring, and that um, that I have um, that sometimes I like to deal with things that are a little bit controversial. I, uh, I look, I'm an outsider in Israel. And for a while that was challenging, but then I realized that being an outsider means that I'm on the edge and the view from the edge is exquisite. And that's something that I bring with me to my work uh, with Times of Israel, with um, when I write for Feller, when I was working with Jurotica or any other client that I may take on on a freelance basis. Um, and so being so open in my writing it helps in that sense because people who are hiring me already know, all right, we're hiring this girl that who wrote X, Y, and Z. Do we want her? Yes. Okay, we take the full package. And um, I don't like to compartmentalize. It's, it's something I can do, but I prefer not to. And so, so far it's worked where I can bring in my own personality to the voice on Facebook. I tone it down a little, um, of course. Same with Twitter. Um, and then when I promote the article through my own Facebook page, then I have a little more free reign. And I also have more room on Twitter to put, play around with it as well. So I, I like having that flexibility, but I, I, feel, I feel like I'm still being authentic in, in my work. And that's okay. something that's really important to me. And I'm really lucky to be able to do that. And I'm grateful for it. I'm going to ask you a question. I don't know how many people ask you this, but like when you're – getting ready for your day, what are the sites online that you study and you really want to see what they're doing social media-wise? Who are the ones that are the examples for you? That's a good question, and I usually I just start my day with a cup of coffee and dive right in. Um, I, I'm not... Do you miss American coffee? Oh, no, I love Israeli coffee. Oh, what's your favorite coffee store? There's a, there's a cafe um, on the kibbutz that I really like. I also like our cafe, um, Aroma. Um, I like the chocolate you know, like they put in the This cafe bottom. works, too. Oh, okay. It, you know, it's, uh, but I, I miss vanilla lattes and coffee bean. I oh. really do. Yeah. The, the one in Jerusalem isn't, doesn't match? I haven't been. I have not been. Can you believe it? But... Um, that's a, it's the same yeah, stuff shipped over from the States. And that's what I hear. No, I should go. Okay, um, so you sit down. What are the sites that you go to look? I think Jezebel's done a great job. Um, Gawker Media has done a great job. They actually don't use Facebook comments, but, they're, but they have great traction anyway because they've built an incredible brand for themselves. How, how, what actually, do you think? Um, Gawker, BuzzFeed, mm -hmm. they're breaking mm -hmm. the model. Do you yeah. think that that's the the future? I don't know. I don't know. I think that it will be a future. I think that there is no, there isn't necessarily going to be one cohesive future because social media is such a, um, it's chimerical. It's, it's got these different facets because the people behind it have different 
beliefs and wants and needs, and it, it doesn't move as one force. I mean, there, there are parts of it that do move as one wave, but I think that um, there are other, it's anyone's guess at this point where things are going. And I think certainly that model is going to continue and will grow. But I also think that um, other models will as well. Keller, I think, has a great presence online. Um, they have Facebook commenting as well. Their social media presence is very strong on Facebook and on Twitter, and it's growing. Um, so I, and they also have a nice interface. So I look at that as a good example. Huffington Post does a great job. Um, you know, also the, the more traditional sites like New York Times. Um, now, now, Huffington then, Post does not use Facebook comments, and, uh -uh. and some of their comments really do. Like, you go in there... Oh, and, yeah, it can, be, it can get nasty. They're very nasty. So you think that the Facebook kind of stops it from... On times of it, Israel. Yeah, I think certainly it mitigates that. Um, but what Huffington Post has done with their own brand of comments is they've created their own community of people who comment. Same with Jezebel. And so then that inspires people within those communities to share the articles via Facebook and Twitter anyway. So, but it's, it's a different beast entirely. But, um, so you're, so you're I, there watching this stuff from afar. You're watching Gawker mm -hmm. and Jezebel and these other sites. What do you get out of it? What do you take home from, from it so that you can go into Times of Israel or one of your other projects and transfer something that you've learned? Humor. Humor is important. Saying something, even if it's the same thing everyone else is saying, but saying it in a slightly different way, that's going to get you visibility. It's going to make people stop and look and engage. Um, taking risks, that's also going to help bring traffic or at least create a conversation that will eventually help sustain a platform so that more traffic can come. Um, and all of these things are being done by Feller in Times of Israel, and it's nice to see it. So I'm going to try and sum up. We've gone on for a while, but I'm going to, mm -hmm. from what I've learned from you, is that the number one thing, in your opinion, is content, content, and content. Keep the content on edge, adds um, a good sense of humor in it, and master social media. Do you think that would do it? Sure. Um, and also, if you're running a new site, staying true to to the the importance of journalism, to the integrity of reporting the news as factually as possible, also crucial, because if your readers can sniff out a bias, then you lose that credibility, and that's that's hard. It's hard to gain, to get that back. And, um, Do you ever look at yourself, wake up one day and say, gosh, you know, I have a lot of power here. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an influencer. <laughs> look, when I die, I want my clout score on my tombstone. That's all I have to say about <laughs> No, I, I, look, I think that we're, I'm lucky to be doing what I love. Um, I'm very blessed to have been helped along the way there by incredible people who are also doing what they love. Um, I love giving back. If someone is looking for a job, I want to hear about it and I want to help if I can. You were doing that and, online for a yeah. while. And, and I still am um, less so on the Facebook page, but more with personal connections. And a few things have materialized for people that way, and it's cool. Um, I think that I'm lucky, I'm happy in my work, and I want others to be as well. And so, um, and that for me is a very important part of social media, the sense of not looking at things as having a limited good, but there's enough to go around. And clicking like on one person's article is not going to diminish somebody else. Um, promoting good content, it's important. And um, we're all engaging in this bigger conversation about what it, even for those of us who care about Israel, but what it means to love this place, live in this place or not, and um, building that community through Times of Israel, through the social media aspect of Times of Israel has been, has been great. And um, 
I, I think I'm getting off topic. But, but that's, a, uh, that's okay. We've gone on for a while. Your time is valuable. I really want to thank you for doing this um, interview. It's, it's awesome, and I'll, I'll send you a copy of it when it's, when it's all done. Um, Sarah Tuttle Singer, Times of Israel Kveller, Huffington Post, Jezebel, Juratica, and parts, uh, uh, probably other sites that I, I haven't found yet. Um, Thank you. It's really a pleasure to talk with you. Take care and be well. Take care. Bye.